Hello, and welcome back to the mini-sode of the Book Marketing Tips and Author Success Podcast. This is Penny Santaveri and Amy Cornell, and today we're actually talking again about Goodreads, but this, this, this mini-sode was inspired by a meeting that we had just this week with the folks at Goodreads, and we're always so excited to connect with industry partners, and it was a fun, fun, fun call. What's interesting is that one of our biggest takeaways from this call was all the work that we do for our authors on Goodreads. And this by no means is me sitting here boasting, although I am kind of boasting because I'm really actually proud of the work that we do both for our authors and on these individual platforms. And one of the things that I think that the Goodreads folks were so surprised about was the fact that we and Amy's going to elaborate on this because she is our resident Goodreads expert, but we actually get into the author's profile on Goodreads and do all of the optimization and do the giveaways and things like that. And the reason that that matters is because we are creating your relationships. And I think that a lot of other people who are doing Goodreads uh, packages or Goodreads promos or whatever, they're utilizing their own Goodreads page and that doesn't benefit you as the author at all. So we wanted to do the show again, not just to boast, even though we're awesome, but because (laughs) I think it's a good cautionary tale that if you're working with a company or a publisher that says, I'm going to do your Goodreads, Amy's got some tips for you on why you, you know, how we do it and basically why you want it all done from your own page because otherwise you don't really have there at the end of the day, when your Goodreads campaign is over, you walk away with nothing. Right. Right. That was pretty, that was so eye opening, Penny, you know, these individuals that we were able to chat with, you know, they made it very clear at the beginning that, you know, they, they have ongoing dialogue with a lot of other industry, you know, teams that, that do book marketing, promotion, publicity type stuff. Uh And so to see them be caught off guard when we started explaining what we do was, it was like, kind of like, wait, wait, what? We kind of did this back and forth. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because again, like Penny said, we put, we do a lot of work for every single strategy that we, we recommend for a client. And, you know, I'm going to sound really naive. Like it's, it's easy to think that that is the norm, you know, that that's, that that's what we're all doing, but very clearly that is not the case as, you know, again, these Goodreads people let us in on essentially. So, and I figured with that, Penny and I were chatting, it's like, well, maybe we should, you know, kind of like give a peek behind the curtain about what the difference is in what we focus on versus what the standard seems to be. So as Penny mentioned, you know, we actually get into our client's account and we do the work from our client's account. And the whole reason we do that is because we want you to walk away with something that looks professional and impressive. And most importantly, something that will continue to serve you long after our work is over. Yeah. Because you know, a marketing campaign only lasts for so long. So we always are trying to focus on what else can we do that they can walk away with that will keep working for them, you know? And kind of tied into that, we run, and Penny mentioned this too, we run our giveaways through our, our client's account as well. It's it's a lot of extra steps. There's a lot of security things that we have to deal with in that regard, uh, just to be, you know, safe and in all these things, but it's worth the extra steps for us. You know, a lot of companies, a lot of publishers, especially, will do giveaways as part of a book launch. They'll do a Goodreads giveaway. But as Penny mentioned, they typically do it through their own corporate account, which means all the data that comes from that giveaway and everything you can learn from it, that is not living on your account. That lives with whoever ran the giveaway for you. And, you know, we specifically don't want to do that because you can learn a lot from the data and the kind of interest you generate from that. And and you should be building off of that and using that for your future networking. So that's a huge element that uh, a lot of authors, Penny, they probably mention it to you too. When they come to us, they go, oh, I have Goodreads taken care of. And when we start digging into what that means, it's typically a giveaway. And when we know that they're working with a you know publisher or publishing service, that it's going to be one of these where it's not actually set up you know, through their account, it's set up through a corporate account. So we always say, hold on, hear us out. We do a few things differently, you know, Uh and that kind of leads me to my next point, which is that we take your potential networking opportunities very seriously. 
You know, there are so many fabulous options to connect with serious genre fans on Goodreads. I mean, you really have a captive audience there. So even if you're social media adverse and you you don't like getting on all the things and hopping on all the new trends, Goodreads is a great place to be because at least you're all book fans when you're there. You know, you're yeah. not having to you break through the noise of somebody that's also showing up to get a new recipe for tonight or a new fitness tip or anything like that. That's not why they show up on Goodreads. And we really get the ball rolling in a lot of different ways for you in regards to your networking potential and kind of getting you in front of genre fans, readers. We kind of push you to the front of the lines, for lack of a better term, and really kind of get the ball rolling. And then last but not least, uh, and this was another big element that we chatted about with the Goodreads people, that we we provide a lot of relatively easy to implement you know, tips and suggestions for taking over once our work is done. Because we want our clients to feel comfortable and productive using the site. Again, it's not a one and done. We did our work. You know, you never have to get on it again. And, you know, the reality, Penny's an author. And we, the company has been working with authors for over 20 years. You know, so believe me when I say we are very thoughtful and intentional about what we recommend. You know, we're not fans of just throwing all the ideas out. Right. Um, you know, we really just want to focus on what actually works and kind of letting you know why it works and how you can execute it. And so a lot of what we do, um, we do a lot of the work on your behalf, but then you also get to combine it with some kind of insider, you know, tips and knowledge for how to really maximize on it going forward. So you invested in our help, but you also invested in your ability to do things on your own a lot easier going forward as well. Yeah. And I think that's a really, I think that's a very important distinction, not just for Goodreads, even though it is the topic of the conversation today, but you really, whenever you are working with any, whether it's your publisher or any kind of a promotional service, make sure that you get to, that you still get to own the real estate, right? Because as a takeaway, the Goodreads campaign, as Amy described, is really valuable. So you can do, you know, you can run with it and you can do all kinds of great stuff. If you don't own it, all of the momentum has gone to somebody else's account, which really is kind of a shame. So it's a good question to ask. It is definitely, and it's not something, it's interesting because I talked to an author yesterday and she said, oh, my publisher's, it was very timely after this Goodreads call. Oh, she said, my publisher is doing my Goodreads account. And I asked her, I said, are they doing it on your account or are they doing it on their account? And she said, oh, I never thought to ask that. So it's a good question to ask um, because it is much harder. And Amy is far too modest to say this, but, you know, it's one step versus 15 steps and not, you know, and you really, it's worth the extra work to be able to own that, um, to be able to be able to walk away with, with a really hefty um, Goodreads profile. Yeah, that's a very good point, Penny. The Goodreads people said they're like, wow, you guys really do a lot of work. And we both were like, huh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's our normal, but that's awesome that you're recognizing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really, it was kind of a fun takeaway from, um, it was kind of a fun takeaway from that call was the fact that there is, you know, there are no shortcuts. We're going to do a podcast on this, but there are no shortcuts to success and there's no, you know, generally automation of any kind does gener does not does not is not successful so um not that you know nothing is nothing that we do is automated but certainly when it comes to marketing you got to put in the work you got to put in the time thank you so much for tuning in this is the mini sode of the book marketing tips and author success podcast we'll see you next time bye bye